What's up guys, we're just a few days away from Elon's Starship update and the pace at SpaceX's facilities in Boca Chica is off the chart. SpaceX is disrupting and revolutionizing the aerospace industry. The company manages to do in hours what traditionally would take many months or even years to accomplish. And SpaceX also does all of it at a fraction of the cost. Since the last video, quite a lot has happened. Things literally happen so quickly that there can be a hard time just keeping up. The troublesome nose cone fairing has been replaced. In the previous video, I mentioned that a new ring was spotted and it was speculated that that ring would have been used as a replacement section for the tapered nose cone fairing. It now turns out that that hypothesis was actually true. Over this past weekend, on September 22nd, we saw SpaceX remove the old tapered section. The nose cone was also welded to the new tapered section. According to Elon, the upper and lower sections of Starship Mark 1 will be attached tomorrow, Wednesday 25th September 2019. The Raptor engines have already been installed. Much to everyone's amazement, on Sunday night, Elon announced that the three Raptor engines were installed on Starship Mark 1. This was quite a surprise. Two Raptor engines were spotted earlier that day, again September 22nd. One of the Raptors was spotted by Austin Barnard and the other by Boca Chica Gal. But even though they were spotted on the scene, I don't think anyone expected them to be mounted so quickly. There's still some speculation as to whether all the Raptors on board are flight ready for the 20km test launch scheduled for October or if they've just been installed right now for cosmetic purposes for Elon's presentation. It's also speculated that there are four Raptor engines on the site at Boca Chica, the three mounted on Mark 1 as well as a Raptor that may be displayed next to a Merlin engine. That's going to be quite the picture to see in real life. A closer look at internal structures. Over the past weeks, we've really gotten to see a lot of manufacturing and assembly of Starship Mark 1's external structure. But in a tweet storm on Sunday night, Elon unveiled some new details on Mark 1's internal structure. The stuff that we're not quite able to see without actually working on the side up close with Starship. So according to Elon, the nose tip has forward movable fins, coal gas attitude control thrusters, header tank for landing, composite pressure vessels, and several large batteries. That might look like a lot of mass in the nose cone, but that was done to balance the high mass of the Raptor engines and the rear fins. This is done to keep the rocket's center of gravity ahead of the center of pressure, important for stability. But one of the notable moments that happened over the weekend was the installation of the fins. On Saturday, September 21st, the team at Boca Chica added the first rear fin to the lower tank section. Just a day later, on Sunday, September 22nd, the second rear fin was added. The addition of the fins really took Mark 1 to another level. As opposed to just the cylindrical structure that we've been seeing over the past few weeks, this thing now looks a lot more like a rocket. What's perhaps even more compelling is that for the first time in months, we've gotten a look as to what the new Starship models might look like. The skydiving spaceship. There's been a lot of discussion around the rear fins, partly because they look so different from the 2018 BFR design. The forward fins also look significantly different from the 2018 design, which means that this thing is starting to look like an entirely different Starship from the one we saw back in 2018. For one, we were expecting a third landing leg or fin, and for now it's been confirmed by Elon that Mark 1 and Mark 2 will now only utilize two rear fins. Design changes, two fins versus three fins. Since the two fins are mounted to the sides of Starship off the ground, they can no longer function as landing legs. This means for Starship, at least Mark 1 and Mark 2 for now will have to use mounted legs. In this way, the design is sort of a hybrid between BFR 2018 version and the ITS. What I mean by that is that it has fins or wings that can be augmented or actuated 2018 BFR design plus the lighter and smaller landing legs that were seen in the 2016 ITS. But why the removal of the third leg? This particular configuration of the two fin design feels different. There's something about that third fin that just seems more balanced for some reason. So why is SpaceX eliminating the third fin or leg? Well, back in 2018, Elon mentioned that the third fin was really being used as a landing leg. It wasn't really there to provide any additional aerodynamic features. 
In his tweet storm on Sunday, Elon goes a little more into detail on SpaceX's logic for eliminating the third fin. He describes the current design of Starship Mark 1 as a sort of combination between Dragon, Falcon 9, and a skydiver. He used the analogy of the skydiver back in 2018 as well, when describing how Starship would function during re-entry. The, the way it operates is kind of more like a skydiver than, a, than an aircraft. Uh, Almost the entire time when it's re-entering, it is just trying to, to break. It's just trying to stop. So it's, uh, it's doing everything it can to shed velocity while distributing that force over the most amount of surface area possible. So to really understand this concept, you kind of have to get the physics behind skydiving. There's a great video from MIT that gets the point across. You learn in school that things accelerate towards the ground because of gravity. But when things like skydivers fall for thousands of feet, another force becomes important. Drag! Gravity pulls skydivers toward the Earth. But as we fall, tiny air molecules bump into us. Each tiny bump causes a little bit of force against our bodies. The hit from one air molecule may not seem like a lot, but when you add all those tiny forces up, you get a big force called drag, which pushes up opposite to gravity. The fins on Starship are designed to provide additional drag and braking when Starship enters Earth's atmosphere or the Martian atmosphere. By changing the surface area of the fins in terms of the vehicle's design, SpaceX is able to create more or less drag. And by augmenting the rear and forward fins as well as the ACS thrusters, SpaceX is able to control how quickly, or more importantly, how slowly, Starship enters an atmosphere. Through varying the control surfaces, SpaceX can adjust drag and pitch. It's the same when skydivers manipulate their bodies to control how quickly or slowly they're able to fall. It's all about getting the balance just right. In Elon's own words, stability is controlled by very rapid movement of rear and forward fins during entry and landing, as well as ACS thrusters the smaller leeward fin would be used as a leg. So here's a theory. Eliminating the third leg for one reduces the mass. The reduction in mass can be extremely important during entry, descent, and landing on Mars. The Martian atmosphere compared to Earth's atmosphere is extremely thin, which means that slowing down isn't exactly easy. The concept is explained really well in this clip of Mars EDL from the Curiosity rover. Mars is actually really hard to slow down because it has just enough atmosphere that you have to deal with it. Otherwise, it will destroy your spacecraft. On the other hand, it doesn't have enough atmosphere to finish the job. Lighter objects have the tendency to fall slower. By reducing the weight or eliminating the third leg, SpaceX is able to reduce the terminal velocity of Starship, which allows the spacecraft to descend slowly. Here's that video from MIT again that illustrates the point. Swathi has a lot less surface area than me, so you'd think that she'd fall faster. But actually, she's so much lighter than me that she has a tendency to fall slower. But by reducing how much surface area is exposed to the air molecules, I can reduce drag and keep up with banks. The combination of increasing drag while decreasing weight is what reduces the terminal velocity. This, of course, is just in theory. When implementing things in the real world, things tend to get increasingly more complicated, and there are other factors at play here than just EDL. Starship is an extremely versatile vehicle that has to perform a number of functions. It has to be launched from Earth, withstand the journey to Mars, land on Mars, take off from Mars, and come back to Earth. There are trade-offs. According to Elon, current analysis, which he's not fully bought into, suggests that two rear fins with separate airframe-mounted legs will be lighter, so this is the plan for Mark 1 and Mark 2. The skydiver concept just seems insanely cool, and probably will be amazing to watch once we get to that point. For now though, we can look forward to Starship Mark 1 coming together in the next few days, and Elon's presentation this Saturday.